For 20 years, I've been hearing far-fetched stories about a mythical American supercar. Mid-engined, hugely powerful, inch-high styling and two-foot-wide. Well, guess what? It isn't a myth at all, and I found it. It's called a Vector. No, not Vectra. Vectra is a little rash you get when you buy a Vauxhall. This is a Vector, as in Tyror. <laughs> Turns out the original Vector company went out of business, as did the company that bought it out. So what you're looking at here is an international hybrid which has risen, phoenix-like, from the ashes. The Americans styled it and it's built in Florida, but the chassis was designed by a bunch of ex-Lotus people and the engine is Italian. Quite a recipe. Yes, but then the whole thing was cooked by a man who learned everything there is to know about quality control in a Bulgarian power station. This door doesn't fit properly and every time you go near this vent, it falls into the dashboard. And would you just look at that headlamp assembly? Looks like it was done by my dog. Of course, none of this really matters. Supercars are supposed to be petulant and awkward, like supermodels. We don't mind because they look like angels and go like rabbits. I can forgive the Vector, it's poor build quality, it's silly electric windows and this ridiculous driving position because it looks. Well, it... It looks like this. The Vector may be far too big. It's wider than a Diablo. Maybe may be plastic, but it's a full-on, proper supercar. Hard to drive, uncomfortable, and bereft of anything that smacks of vegetarianism. Now, the Vector has no traction control, no sequential gearbox, no anti-lock brakes. But none of these things scare me. What does scare me is the excellent rear visibility. You see, in an ordinary supercar, half of Georgia's state troopers could be chasing me and I wouldn't have a clue. But in this, I could see them coming. And come they will, if I put my foot down. To find out why, there's no point looking under the bonnet, because all you'll find there is boot. This is where you find the action. Now, it may say Vector on there, but I assure you that is a 5.7-litre Lamborghini V12 with a five-speed Ford GT40 gearbox nailed to the back. It develops as near as makes no difference 500 horsepower which equates to a top speed of 190 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds. All that in a country where you aren't even allowed to keep a pet alligator. So who's going to buy this thing? To find out, I asked the president of the company who, like the car, turned out to be about as American as Nelson's column. Our first car was bought by a guy in Vegas, who took uh, one end of his house down and par parked the car in his lounge, rebuilt the house. And we don't get any warranty problems from him, so, you know, <laughs> that suits us. <laughs> what do you think you have to do to get the Vector name across? Oh, well, we obviously have to go motor racing. To compensate for the lack of heritage, such as Ferrari, Lamborghini have got, we've got to go motor racing and we've got to win. I have to say that up till now, the Vector's been a bit disheartening. There isn't enough power assistance for the steering, it bangs and crashes everywhere. 
air conditioning doesn't work properly and it absolutely reeks of petrol in here. But it's often the case that if you show a supercar the track, the dog does an about face and becomes a god. Serious turn in and big grip. Oh, this is nice. You can tell that there's some ex Lotus boys have been fiddling around with this. trouble is that to get the best out of it you have to be absolutely brutal to slam the gears in stand on the brakes and the steering it's like wrestling a Russian shot putter I'm absolutely knackered <laughs> I need to slow down here and work this car out you see, if all goes according to plan, it'll be launched in Britain soon, costing, I'm led to believe, £100,000. Now that is Ferrari 355 money. So, this or the Ferrari, which is it to be? Well, I guess if you've got forearms like giant redwoods, the stamina of a gazelle, your own personal racetrack and a burning desire to be different. You should still have the Ferrari. Thirty miles on and we're getting to know our frugal friend.